right there is it for my Spiral Abyss run. So it has been a very eventful run because I did not reset once. Yes, so you could actually go into the editing program yourself when you download this video and you'll see there are no splices. So yes, I did one try the Abyss this time, which is really, really nice. And the only reason why I went tried the Abyss this time is because of the team I used, and I will be discussing that right now. So this is going to be a new segment of this uh, Spiral Abyss video. Since I don't usually do these segments, um, when I talk about teams, I just go straight into the builds. This time, I have to explain why I used the teams that I used. So without any further ado, let's just discuss about it. So on the first half team, I used a one animal triple hydro team, aka Hydro Swirl. And then in the second half, I use Raiden National. Now, if you want to know the reason why I use those two teams, it's because those two teams are the most commonly used teams in this version Spiral Abyss. Yes, the first half is the um, One Animal and Triple Hydro, and then the second half is Raiden National. Those two teams are the most used right now. And if you go into Akasha Data, which I will be talking about right now and putting up on the screen, here are the results of this version Spiral Abyss. So as you see here, Farina is the most used character in this Spiral Abyss. And then the second is Nouvellet, third is Kazuha, and then fourth is Nahida, so on and so forth. So it's your typical suspects on this Spiral Abyss, your most commonly used characters. Surprisingly, Jean, yes, Jean got a surprising spike on um, usage. That's because Jean is one of the best healers currently for um farina teams because jean heals all party members it's just like kokomi with her burst where she can heal all party members so yeah that's the reason why jean got a spike up on usage rating but other than that these are your typical suspects on um the spiral abyss but i mainly want to talk about that farina is the most used character on this spiral abyss specifically because well this spiral abyss tailors to her she is a hydro character and the enemies on the first half are pyro enemies with pyro shields. So this works out really well. Same with Nouvellet. Nouvellet is a hydro character. Of course, he tears down pyro shields. So yeah. And now, um, since that data is out of the way, let's talk about the first half and second half data, which I will put up on the screen right now. So here we go. So on the first half, the most used team is Kazuha, Kokomi, Yelon, and Farina. That is the reason why I used the first half. I just wanted to showcase that um, the most used teams are the teams that destroy this abyss. And also, I want to test them out too. So yeah, um, I have to test out if the teams are actually really broken or not. And well, they are really broken. A lot of people um, used this team for the first half. And I will say, yes, this is the best team to use on the first half. Of course, there is another team right there. There is a... Farina, Nouvellet, Baiju, and Kasuha team, aka Bloom. Bloom works really well um, on this Spiral Abyss as well, but I don't have Nouvellet, so I can't test that out. Yeah, but these are your just your main um, teams right there on the first half. Um, there is a Ayaka Freeze. There's also a comp with Jean in it, with Zhongli for the shield. And we have another comp with Farina, Nouvellet, and Zhongli with Kasuha. Yeah, there's a lot of teams you can run, but... The uh, team that I ran is the most popular, which is Farina, Yelan, Kokomi, and Kazaha. And then in the second half team, we have the most used um, team in the game, which is Raiden National. Yes, this team has never died ever. And, well, it's no exception here. People use it in the second half a lot. So yeah, um, Raiden National is still a really good team to this very day. And it destroys a lot of this abyss. It is probably one of the best DPS teams in the entire game. Just because of how much damage Raiden can do alone. And especially if you have your Raiden at C2. She demolishes this abyss. I have her at C0 and she still performed really well. So yeah. Um, it is pretty clear why people use Raiden National on the second half. Um, if we take a look at the other teams right here, we have Hotel Double Hydro. It's still a pretty good DPS team, could get the job done. But I'm pretty sure people use the Raiden team because of the um, Chamber 1 first half boss with the uh, Sumeru robot. Because it gets exposed when you use Electro and Hotel teams don't have Electro. The third most used team right here 
is the I'll Hate Them uh, Hyper Bloom team. Um, this is also a really commonly used team um, because I'll Hate Them is just way too good. But still the best dungeon DPS in the game in my opinion. And Kukui Shinobu um, could still put in work um, in the uh, Chamber 1 first half because the robot is weak to electro attacks. And also you could do quicken reactions on the invisible um, mode with the robot on Samaru, and then it basically becomes vulnerable. So yeah, um, Dendro teams work really well too. Um, there, in the fourth team, we have a Nahida, uh, Tainari, Ye, or uh, Nahida, Tainari, <laughs> Ye, Miko, and Zhongli. I don't know why I can't even, uh, think about their names. But this is also a really, uh, commonly used team here. It's another Dendro Quicken team. Looks pretty good. And then here we have a uh, Raiden, Bennett, Zhongling, and Yelan. It looks like a Vaporize Overload team. So yeah, that, it's just your typical team. But yeah, there is your first half and second half most used teams. That's the reason why I use the first half and second half right there. The most commonly used teams. I just wanted to see if they could destroy the Spiral Abyss. And well, they did. So yeah, um, there we go. So now it is time to go over my build now, so let's transition to that. Let's open up the party screen because the transitions look really cool on the characters when they show up. And let's talk about them right now. So, on the first half, on the most commonly used team, we have, well, <laughs> Kazaha um, Hydro Team, aka Hydro Swirl. So first up, on the team, we got Kazaha who is the main DPS in this entire game, or in this entire Spiral Abyss. You could count Kokomi one as well, but I know Kokomi as a support, not a DPS, but she still pulled her own weight. So yeah, well, um, I have two DPSs on the team, quote unquote, but Kazuha is my main DPS. So Kazuha has changed a lot um, for my team recently, because look at this, he has more EM and he has more ER, yes, so I can get his burst consistently now. But the cost of that is less crit rate, less crit damage. But he still pulled his own weight by dealing a ton of damage. And also, since he has high EM anyway, he gives buffs to his other party members, meaning that they do a bunch of hydro damage. So yeah, that's pretty, pretty good for Kazaha. I still gave him animal and, um, damage cup because I still need him to do more damage, and he still works fine. I don't need to give him more EM. He is just fine the way he is now. As for weapon, I have Iron Sting, um, 4 star R5. It is his, I think his best free to play weapon? Yeah. Um, of course his best weapon is his own 5 star weapon, but Iron Sting is a pretty great free to play option, and it is his best free to play sword because it gives him EM. As for artifact set, I have for Peace Be Iridescent Venurer, which is his best set ever. There is no other set you would run on Kazuha because he is here to support and deal damage. So yeah, this is literally made for him. It decreases um, swirl, uh, elemental resistance, depending on what element is caught up on the swirl. In this case, Hydro, since all my characters use Hydro in the first half. Which basically decreases it by 40%, which is common. So yeah. As for constellations, I am at C0. He's good in C0 anyway, so he doesn't really need the constellations to be good. And as for talent 6, 6, 10. Yes, I crowned this because this is his bread and butter, Kazuha Slash. Which basically, well, it makes a great big AoE and then does a bunch of damage. So yeah. There is Kazuha, still used to this very day, as you see there in the... Um, uh, charts if you look way back. Um, Kazuha, still a great animo support. Still one of the best in the game. Next up, we have Lady Farina, aka Miss Farina. So Miss Farina right here is also a great contributor to the uh, first half team, just because of how much she gives off by support and sub DPS. So as you can see here, her HP is at 28,000. Her crit rate, crit damage is extremely high, and her ER is extremely high, meaning that she could get her support back up really, really fast on her burst. As her weapon, I have Splendor of Tranquil Waters. This is her best weapon. There is no other weapon you would run. 
if you do play 1.1 or if you have played um, at 1.1, you could run Festering Desire. If you are past 1.1 and if you played, well, after the Dragon Spine update, then you could just run the Fishing Pole Arm or the Fishing um, Sword that you get by fishing in a fontaine. So yeah, there's that. But Splendor Tranquil Waters is her best sword, so I just gave her that. As for artifacts, I have 4-piece Golden Troop. This is her best sub-DPS and support set. So yes, um, she is mostly off-field all the time. So this is literally the perfect set for her. No other set I would ever run. But if you want to have um, any other artifact suggestions from me, then you could run 4-piece Ocean Hued Clam. That is... Um, just a pure support for Rina. Or you can run a Maiden set if you want a really, really, really big heal uh, for Rina. You can also run two-piece HP as well. So HP, HP. You can run double HP. Or you can run Tenacity of the Millilith if you think that you want more buffs on your Farina. But I ran Golden Troop because she is mainly a sub-DPS um, Farina that I use. So yeah. As for Constellations, I have Red C2. If you want to run her as a sub DPS, C0 is fine, but if you want to run her as a support, you need her C2. Because in C2, she accelerates her burst fanfare, and the more fanfare you have, the higher your damage is. And the more fanfare you have overflowed, the more HP she gets. And the more HP she gets, the more uh, powerful her, well, Salon members are, as you see here. So, yeah, that is why I gave her C2. And as for talents right here, you already saw here, 696. I am planning to get this to level 10 once um, weekly reset hits. By the time I upload this video, she will probably be already at 6106. So yeah, um, so think of it as 6106. But as for now, at the time I'm recording this video, 696. That is her talent level. And that is it for Farida. Really good. Um, I can see why people use her a lot in Abyss. I mean, I use her a lot now because she is, like, one of my strongest characters I've built in um, Genshin. So yeah, um, Farina. There you go. Next up, our third member of the team. We got Miss Yelon herself. So Yelon, as you see here, her HP is extremely high because she scales off of HP. Her crit rate crit damage is pretty good, especially her crit rate, it means that she can crit a lot. Her energy recharge is basically at the minimum, 180 is a comfort zone, but I might get her to 200, but I think 180 is fine, she can still get her burst consistently, so it doesn't really matter if uh, she's at 180 or not. Her weapon right here is Aqua Simulacra, this is her best bow, um, I guess a free to play bow that you can run is Stringless. But Aqua Simulacra is literally made for her, so this is a bow you should pick up if you ever picked up Yelon. As for Artifact Set, I have 4-Piece Emblem. This is her best set. Since she is mainly played as a sub-DPS, this is literally the perfect set for her. Since, well, Emblem of Severed Fate gives her increased burst damage, and she is all about the burst. So yeah. As for Constellations, I have her at C0. Again, she doesn't need Constellations to be good. Um, she is great with her base kit, because all she needs is to do her burst damage. And as for talent 6, 7, 8, I am planning to level this up to level 10, but I am holding off because the battle pass, well, you have to spend 500,000 mora to get points on the battle pass, so I'm just gonna wait until weekly reset. This will probably be at 10 once um, this video has been uploaded, so yeah, think of it as 6, 7, 10. But yeah, there is Yelon. Still really good to this day. A lot of people use her since she is just Xing Cho, <laughs> but a 5 star. So yeah. And last but not least, we have Kokomi, who has the most, well, overhaul out of all of my characters here because she changed sets completely. Yes, she does not run Ocean Hued Clam anymore. She runs a different set entirely. So yeah. As you see here, her max HP has been going up quite a bit. This is literally really, really high. If she is in a double Hydro team, this is at 40,000 HP. So yeah, keep that in mind. But 37,000 HP right here. She doesn't need crit rate crit damage since, well, her literal talent gives her negative 100% crit rate. Her healing bonus is really high, and her energy recharge is really high too. That is why I was able to spam Kokomi Burst. And she's able to do big damage since she has, well, HP. She scales off of HP. 
As her weapon, I have Thrilling Tales of the Dragon Slayers. This is literally her best weapon. Like, I'm not joking. This is her best weapon for support. Uh, Kokomi. If you want a DPS Kokomi, of course, the Purple Donut is her best weapon. But this is literally her best support weapon because it gives attack when she is off-field. And most of the time, she is off-field when she casts her E. Uh, meaning that all your other characters will just deal damage while Kokomi is just sitting there um, getting her burst back. So yeah, this is literally her best set. As for artifact set, as you see here, no more Ocean Hued Clam. She runs Tenacity of the Millilith now. So when she uses her elemental skill, I get attack buffs. So yeah, this is extremely, extremely good for Kokomi. Since, well, she not only has Thrilling Tales, she has Millilith, meaning that I'm able to get a bunch of attack buffs. And that is why Kazuha was able to deal big damage. So yeah. As for Constellation, I have her at C1. I got this by accident, by the way. So I guess this uh, makes her a main DPS now, because Kokomi, well, at C1, she deals more Hydro damage off her max HP because of her C1. But um, she doesn't need Constellations to be good. I just got this by accident. Um, if you don't know, watch the Kokomi summoning video. Then you'll understand the context. But yeah. Um, Kokomi doesn't need any constellations to be good. She's already good, as she is. As for talents, I have her at 688, planning to level these up to level 10 since I use her way too much. Yeah, Kokomi, really good. Um, one of the best healers in the game, if not the best healer in the game currently. <laughs> and now it is time to talk about the second half team, which is Raiden National. So, here we go. First off, we got, well... Raiden Shogun herself, aka A. <laughs> so, Raiden, she hasn't changed. Uh, crit rate, crit damage is still really good. Energy recharge is really high. She scales off of energy recharge, by the way, which is why I gave her a lot. Her weapon is Engulfing Lightning. This is her best weapon. Her best free to play weapon is to catch. So, if you want to run a really good free to play weapon on her, run the catch. But if you have a bunch of primal gems to spare, then run Engulfing Lightning. I am saying this right now because Raiden might be in the next version update, so it's up to you to decide if you want to get Engulfing Lightning along with your Raiden Shogun. As for Artifact Set, I have 4 Piece Emblem of Severed Fate. This is her best main DPS, sub DPS, and support set. Literally all rolled into one. This is literally her best set because her literal bread and butter is her burst. Yeah, not only does it do a bunch of damage, it also fuels a bunch of elemental particles on your other characters so that you can get their burst faster. So that is why you run Emblem of Severed Fate. It's extremely good. As for Constellations, ever at C0, I am planning to get this to C2, so stay tuned for a future summoning video when Raiden gets her rerun, which is most likely going to be next version update. And as for talents, I have 10 10 10. I use her a lot, which is why I want to get her C2. Because she is a core member of my party, and I never dropped Raiden once, ever. So yeah, there is Raiden Shogun. Extremely good, still good to this very day. Broken. <laughs> Next up on the national team, we got Xing Cho himself, a day one character, who is still really good to this very day. Yep. <laughs> As you'll see here, his crit rate crit damage is pretty average, but his ER is pretty high, and you'll see why in a second. As for sword, I have Sack Sword. This is his best sword. No other sword you'll ever run besides Sack Sword. Because his elemental skill has a really high cooldown, you want to get this proc'd twice. If you get it proc'd twice, you get his burst faster. That's the reason why you want to run Sack Sword, because two E's will basically give you your burst guaranteed if you have 200% energy recharge, which is why I give him a lot of energy recharge in the first place, because his whole kit is about his burst. As for artifacts, I gave him four piece Emblem of Severed Fate, literally the same thing that Yelan has. This is his best set for sub DPS Shingcho, and that is his main role. He is a sub DPS, not a support. So that is why I gave him Emblem of the Severed Fate, so he could deal a bunch of damage. As for Constellations, I have him at C6. This is literally a day one character. So if you did play this day one, you should have him at C6 by now. If not, then he should pop up on the shop like frequently. So you could just purchase him from the uh, shop and you could just get Shingcho's Constellations that way. 
That's for talent 6, 10, 13. This is crowned because I use it a lot. So yeah, there is Xing Cho, literally the same as Ye Lan in terms of damage and stuff. He's literally, well, they, they have the same kit. So yeah. As for the third member of our team, we have Zhang Ling herself. So Zhang Ling still hasn't changed at all as well. As you see here, crit rate crit damage is okay. Energy recharge is high. You'll probably already know the reason why her energy recharge is high. It's because she runs the same set as Shang Chou and Yelan because she's a sub DPS. But I'm getting ahead of myself right here. So her weapon is to catch. This is her best weapon. Yep. Um, her other best weapon is engulfing lightning, but the catch is literally her best weapon, free to play weapon at least. So this is why I ran this because it just gives off more elemental burst damage. As for artifact set, I have four piece emblem of severed fate. Again, her best set. She's a sub DPS, so running a sub DPS set is obviously the best thing to run jungling on. As for constellations, I have her at C6. Again, she's a day one character. So you should get this naturally, and besides, you get her for free anyway. So yeah, um, still probably one of the best pyro DPSs in the game, but I say she's the best pyro sub DPS. Literally, there's no contest on her. Um, the only other pyro DPS that could uh, contend is Hu Tao. So yeah, Hu Tao and Zhang Ling just share the same spot as like the best hydro DPS in, or the best pyro DPS in the game because they literally are. <laughs> And as for talents, I have 6, 9, 11, planning to level this up to level 13 soon, but she right now is currently at level 80, so I might have to do uh, Pyro Regisvine runs to get her to level 90 since I use her a lot. So yeah, there is Xiong Wing, really, really good. Pyro sub DPS, the best in the game. And last but not least, on our team of National, we have Bennett, our boy Bennett. So he has changed a bit. As you see here, his HP is really high now. <laughs> he has 30k HP. And as you see here, his energy recharge is still pretty high, um, which is really, really good. He has healing bonus as well, so basically I heal really fast. So yeah. As for his weapon, I have Skyward Blade. This is his best weapon for healer Bennett. If you want to run a um, attack buffing Bennett, Run the um, physical damage sword. I forgot what it's called. I think I have it right here. Yeah, this Aquilia Favonia. Um, this is that is his best um, attack sword, base attack, because it has the highest base attack I think in the sword. So run that if you want to run a buffer Bennett. If you want to run a healer Bennett, Skyward Blade is your best bet. As for artifact set, I have four piece no bleece. best. Artifact set. So yeah, um, there's no other artifact set you would run on this guy besides no bleach because well His whole gimmick is that he buffs party members attack. So yeah As for constellations, I have him at C5. C6 literally just hinders him on what teams I want to run him on So that is why I keep them at C5 and not get him C6. If you want to know the reason why uh, Shameless plug check out the C6 Bennett video which I will be linking in the outro. It's the same um, for the Kokomi summoning video. I will be linking that in the outro. So yeah. Um, as for talents, 6, 9, 13. Thir of course, I have to crown this because this is literally what you use Bennett for. It's his burst. So yeah, there is Bennett. Really, really cool um, pyro support. Day one, by the way. I forgot to mention that. Still really good to this very day. Um, really great healer. And that is basically it for... The Spiral Abyss run, as you see there. Really, really cool. I like it. <laughs> um, these are the two most commonly used teams in the game, or at least in this Spiral Abyss, as you saw there in the stats um, back <laughs> in the uh, video. So yeah, that is basically it. If you guys like this video and if you want to see more of these, well, commonly used teams or you want me to test out different teams in this Abyss, let me know. Um, by clicking the like button. It makes me motivated to make more Spiral Abyss videos. And if you do enjoy um, all my content, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell to not miss out on a single upload if you do subscribe. I don't upload uh, consistently, but I do upload once a week. So um, turn on the notification bell will basically help you get your uploads um, scheduled in your box. So yeah, that is really, really um, cool. And... 
Of course, all support is greatly appreciated. It helps me keep me motivated. Again, I can't say this enough. Subscribing and liking the video just gives me a boost of motivation just to make more videos. Yeah, because I really love Genshin and I want to make more content on it. So showing support is greatly appreciated. And I said before, comment down below. What do you think of this Spiral Abyss? And also, what teams do you want me to run next time? Um, let me know in the comments down below. You want me to run a... Dendro team, you want me to run a Geo only team, or G Mono Geo, you want me to run Farina on other comps on this Spiral Abyss, let me know in the comments down below. And as always, thank you guys for watching this Genshin Spiral Abyss video, and I'll see you guys in the next Genshin video.